Something's cooking over here on the wild side. Nesmick describes his cooking system in this way. Two logs, six feet long and eight inches thick, are laid parallel, but seven inches apart at one end and only four at the other. They are bedded firmly and flattened a little on the inside. On the upper sides, the logs are carefully hewed and leveled until pots, pans, and kettles will sit firmly and evenly on them. And then he goes on to describe the upright type that hangs, and I'm not doing that part of it. He later says, The outdoor range can be made by one man in little more than an hour, and the camper out who once tries it will never wish to see a portable camp stove again. But we're going to go see if with my materials, I'm able to successfully reproduce it and use it. I'm also filming this at the very end, so, tune in tomorrow, Sunday morning, for the live video to see if the maggot meat made me sick. On my last camping trip, I found out that I do like to have my cooking stuff on the left and my firewood on the right, which coincidentally is also handy for the fire this time. But when I camp, I found that's how I like it. I just used these flat rocks that I found to set things on, keep them out of the dirt. These don't seem to be really level properly, so I think I need to dig them down. But I've got this hole deep enough, I think, that I can put the coals in here while I'm cooking in case I need to refresh them. And it's deep enough that I won't have to dig them out all the time and disturb my cooking. Seems like a really good system, but let's see how it works. Because this would be so dang narrow, I thought I will just do that system. It's not really creating the coals that I thought it would. Maybe I'll just move the fire there for a little bit. go steering off the Nesmuk way. I think I'm just going to feed this a little bit. This time, I think I learned from my last camp that I need to camp perpendicular to the wind all the time. Anyway, that's what I'm trying now. And that's what I did. And as I'm talking, there's a little bit of a breeze coming. And you see how it takes the smoke away. <sighs> Deep breaths. Deep breaths. So I just filmed a whole bunch of stuff and found out my phone had decided to shut it off. Well, I successfully cooked my tea on there. Didn't take too long to boil it. Burned my tongue just a little. And then I mixed up my bread. I'm using baking soda and cream of tartar, even though my understanding is buttermilk with baking soda was more common, but cream of tartar was a thing. The coals were so hot, I managed to burn this and cook too fast. In retrospect, I should have cooked the meat second, and then the bread after, because I'm going to need to heat that up some more for the meat. 
but otherwise it's cooking great the tea worked out my uh, little tea strainer worked which I don't think is correct but it's more worth it right now to have good tea than <laughs> not the system is working really well these aren't burning up too quick I realized what I could have done was uh, start with the ends and then when these did burn up too much for use I'd still be able to get another use out of them which I probably still can but would have been way easier you know less uh, concern so now I'm letting this finish cooking not getting a rise really but it should be better than or it should be fluffier than if I wasn't using baking soda anyway but even without leavening, it still tastes good. I'll do more of that in the future. So the sheep meat, it was hanging in my horse trailer. I hung the sheep there. And it was hanging there for about a week. And then I went and cut some pieces off and left it in my house inside. And it's still nice and fresh on the inside. The exterior isn't too awfully tough. Otherwise, I uh, will cut it off and feed it to the dogs. So like I say, this, was, this has been just sitting around in my house. So people, when it comes to meat, be careful. Be really careful. But when SHTF happens, just remember me and hopefully you can have some meat that lasts longer than a few days. Warm temperatures and flies are the, the problem. Well guys and gals, I always promise to be honest about my experiment. When I was cutting into this meat, I found a pocket of maggots. I hate maggots, they're so disgusting. I also like my meat really well done. So, I gotta let that burn down. So that sucks. What it was was a interior area. The exterior was all fine. I didn't see any signs of maggots. But on the interior where they were able to hide and get away from the, get their proper growing conditions. Well, that's where they were. So, like I say, I gotta be honest about everything, even when I fail. Now I'm burning it in here. Maybe the coyotes will still be able to enjoy it. I haven't done a lot of meat work in this kind of temperatures, so sucks to let it get ruined like that. Also, not to be near my chickens where they could eat the maggots. Stupid, dumb maggots. I'm going to cook this hot enough I don't have to worry about it. Well, this is definitely the best cooking experience I've ever had. That I can recall. This is fantastic. This is definitely going to be the system. Hopefully I can dig a hole like that in the future. If not, I suppose there's a way of building it up. But I've got my tea worked out really well. My bread worked out really well. I uh, figured out that I should have done that later because the temperatures can be lower for the bread than for the meat. I cooked the meat really good. At this point, I could probably eat the maggots and I'd be fine but I'm pretty sure there weren't any on there. <laughs> so now I just gotta let it cool off. And uh, somebody, I, I don't think this was in the video earlier, one of the viewers commented on having the fire apart from the cooking area. 
which was an excellent idea. So if that was you, comment, remind me. Uh, as we saw, I didn't really need to do it this time, but with different types of firewood where the coals last longer, uh, I think it definitely would have worked. And uh, could even set up two cook systems that way where cooking the meat and boiling water on the hot one and then coals over there for cooking bread. So lots of variations that can be possible, but that was a good tip. Now I'm getting smoke. Hardly dealt with smoke, that was excellent. And the only reason I was sitting so close to it, it's warm enough, I don't need the heat. Uh, mostly just sitting by it for the video. So I didn't even need to be sitting by the smoke. And it wasn't that bad for coming over and cooking when I needed to, had I done it that way. So this was a great experience, Nesmuk's cooking style. In the future, I'll do the uprights, but right now I don't even have equipment that hangs to cook anyway, so don't need that. I'd like to get a coffee pot that's got a bale on it so I can hang it and boil it that way. <sighs> well, I guess this would be a good time to say goodbye. Uh, folks, I did start a Patreon. Uh, don't feel like I'm looking for uh, a lot of money every month if you just want to contribute in such a way so that you feel like you're a part of this and uh, it helps me to be able to do this full time then just a couple bucks a month is fantastic I would be way more excited with a whole lot of people giving little bits of money than just a few people feeling like they got to keep me going uh, that's not what I'm after at all so the link is in my bio I should probably warn you about Facebook I talk about anything and everything. I'm anti-society, so if you think I'm saying something that's opposite your political position, I guarantee it's not, because this brain up here just comes up with all kinds of things that are not, that takes into consideration both sides. So if you don't want to be around any of that, just find me on Instagram. If you're cool with that, then I've warned you, and I'm more active on Facebook anyway. And I try to keep up my daily life stuff for people. So that's Patreon, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, last week I mentioned listening to Young Guns 2, and I thought I'd get more shout-outs on that. But also Facebook... No, no. But also YouTube has shown me that the majority of my uh, viewers are... I think it was 25 to 35 age range. So you guys may not hardly know about the Young Guns 2 soundtrack. If that's the case, I highly encourage you to go check it out and enjoy the Young Guns movies. They're actually pretty decent as far as a lot of the uh, history of Billy the Kid. And of course they crammed it all into an hour and a half or whatever. But otherwise they're great movies and excellent soundtrack. So if you don't know them, check them out and let me know in the comments. So thanks everybody. This has been wonderful, and pretty soon I should be getting up into the mountains for some horseback camping. Well, from over here on the wild side, we'll see you next time. Oh, whoops. Some of you are wondering if I'm actually going to eat this. Absolutely I am. I'm just waiting for it to cool off.